And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. That was a blessing. Be still and know that I am the Lord. Um, that, that being still, that sometimes that's the hardest part, is, uh, is being still and letting God be God uh, in our lives. Uh, thank you for being here today in the house of the Lord. We welcome our online congregation. Uh, I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to the Old Testament, Psalm 84. We're going to look at Psalm 84, and we're going to talk about experiencing God's presence and how we can experience God's presence in a greater and a deeper way. Once you look at Psalm 84. Four. Welcome all of our friends and family and relatives, missionaries and military families around the world uh, that tune into our services each Lord Day here at Bible Way. Um, Psalm 84. Uh, I, will, I will just uh, pause for a second to uh, do a sidebar here on uh, the events of yesterday. Uh, we're not going to focus on those, uh, but the shooting of one of our presidential candidates um, and I'm thankful that he's okay. Uh, but I do want to take a moment here, and you know me from all these years that I've been your pastor. Um, we, we are for the kingdom of God. Say amen. And so the kingdoms of this world and party politics, uh, that's a very minor, minor thing. Uh, you may be dedicated to one party or to another party. All I'm asking you to do is have your supreme allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give me an amen. Give me an amen. So if you are a Democrat and you said, oh, I wish they would have killed him, that is not the way Jesus would want us to think. Okay? If you're a Republican, that's fine. If you're a Democrat, that's fine. Sometimes the Democrats have some good ideas. Sometimes Republicans have some good ideas. And you just have to let all of this vitriol and this uh, hatred rhetoric, we need, we need to tone that down so that we can have a good, fair election. And God ultimately raises up whom he will and puts down whom he will, according to the word of God. Can I have witness? Amen. All right. So we're not concerned in an eternal perspective. Who is the president of this country or that country has nothing to do with God's eternal plan and purpose. Now, you be a good citizen. You vote, you vote, because if you don't vote, you don't have any right to complain, okay? So you get out, you vote, you do what you need to do, and uh, you dedicate yourself to whatever cause that you'd like to. But ultimately, our allegiance is to the Lord God of heaven and earth, first, foremost, and only. Can I have a witness? All right, that's all I'll say about that. You get two for the price of one this morning. Uh, Psalm 84, Psalm 84. And the following letter was, uh, was written from uh, a church member uh, to the pastor. It said, Dear Pastor, you often stress weekly attendance at worship as being very important for a Christian. But I think a person has a right to miss now and then. I think every person ought to be excused for the following reasons and the number of times indicated. Christmas holidays, the Sunday before, the Sunday after, two Sundays off. New Year's, the party lasted too long, one Sunday off. Easter break, get away with the kids, two Sundays off. July 4th, that's a national holiday, one Sunday off. Labor Day, well, that's the end of summer getaway, two Sundays off. Memorial Day, got to visit the hometown folk, one Sunday off. School closing, the uh, kids need a break, one Sunday off. Uh, before school reopens, one last fling, one Sunday off. Family reunions, mine and the wife's, three Sundays off. Sleep late. Stayed up too long uh, Saturday night, nine Sundays off. Uh, death in the family, two Sundays off. Anniversary, when I'm honeymooning, uh, one Sunday off. Sickness, one per family member, 
five Sundays off. Business trip, that's a must, one Sunday off. Family vacations, three to four weeks, three Sundays off. Uh, bad weather, ice, snow, rain, clouds, five Sundays off. Ball games, two Sundays. NASCAR races, two Sundays. Unexpected company, can't walk out on them, two Sundays off. Time change Sundays, spring and fall, uh, two Sundays off. Specials on TV, Super Bowl, etc., three Sundays off. Pastor, that leaves two Sundays per year, so you can count on us to be in church on the fourth Sunday in February and the third Sunday in August unless we are providentially hindered. Signed, sincerely, your faithful member. <laughs> uh, I feel sorry for the pastor who received this letter because apparently his church uh, has people who do not love God's house, nor do they love God's presence. At least in my opinion, no one from our congregation would would even entertain the notion of writing me a letter to inform me that they would be present in the house of worship only two Sundays out of the entire year. Now, we don't, we don't resent people. For the, you know, you take a vacation here and there. I was gone last Sunday on our vacation, and uh, so that's, that's not a problem. Um, no, in our congregation, uh, when exiting the building anyway, uh, out, of, out of all the people that, uh, that attend here, uh, we have people who tell me, often with tears in their eyes, after they've been here in the presence of God, they, they say how much the Word of God ministered to their soul, how much the Word of God meant to them and has guided their lives, helped them grow in grace and increase in the knowledge of God. I believe that we have an assembly of saints who value so much our time in congregational worship right here that we hate to see it end many times and we hate to go home so many times especially when it's that sweetness that sweet spirit that we just feel at home and in comfort and in, the, in a special place of God's presence we just hate to see it end we are a people who feel about God's church today the same way that the psalmist felt about God's temple in his day. I want you to look at Psalm 84 because Psalm 84 describes our deepest yearnings, feelings, and blessings surrounding God's house and God's presence. We want to experience God's presence deeper and more in our lives. Look at Psalm 84 verse number one. How amiable are your tabernacles, O Lord, your house, your houses of worship. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. Yes, that the sparrow has found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in your house. They will be still praising thee. Selah, which means stop, think about, pause, and think about what you have just read. On the Lord's day, if you're a believer, there should be a yearning deep in our soul that, that wants to be, that desires to be in the Lord's house with the Lord's people. Can I have a witness? Say amen. To be in God's house is to be in God's special presence. Now, God is everywhere all the time. We worship him all the days of the week, six, you know, uh, 24, 7, 365. God is everywhere. But when God meets with his people on the Lord's day, when we come together as a corporate body to worship the Lord, that's something that he gives a special presence to. And it is here in the house of God. Nowhere else than right here can we experience the moments that God gives 
in the, the corporate time of worship together. Now, I want you to know the Old Testament was originally written in the Hebrew language, and the Hebrew word that's translated amiable in verse number one, you see, how amiable are your tabernacles, O Lord of hosts, in verse number one. That means beloved, it means friendly, it means pleasant, it means lovely. So what he is saying here is when I worship God, where I worship God, it's such a lovely and pleasant and friendly place. I love it. I just love it. I love coming to worship the Lord my God. Now, we don't yearn for a building the building is just the tool. It's just the instrument. We don't yearn for the building. We yearn for the Lord. We yearn for the presence of God. We want to experience more deeply the Lord's presence in our heart and in our soul. The actual house of worship here only represents the place that we go in order to meet with God and to meet with God's people with our whole person, with our whole person, we desire to sense his presence. Look back at verse number two, because that's the way he felt. The writer of Psalm 84 says, my soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord, to be in the presence of God in his place of worship, in the house of prayer. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. See, the psalmist, he seeks the presence of God with his whole body, soul, and spirit. In the house of worship, he put everything he had and all he was into seeking and experiencing God. So many times the devil shortchanges us when we come into the house of worship. Our mind is back over there doing, thinking about something else that happened yesterday or what we're going to do after the service or what we're going to do tomorrow. The devil will steal that time of the sensing the presence of God right here in the house of worship. Our body is here, but our mind and our spirit is somewhere else and the devil steals from us that time of precious closeness with God we need to be body soul and spirit in the moment of worship give me a witness say amen now in today's terms that means that we would rather be in church than at Disney World or Six Flags. We'd rather be in church than on the golf course. We'd rather be in church than at some sports event or NASCAR race. We would rather be in church than to be at the playground or the campground. Uh, we at home in bed or in front of, front of the television set. Our soul, our body, and our spirit hungers if we are true believers we will hunger for the presence of god we will hunger for the worship of god and to be with the people of god and that's what it means that's what he means when he writes my soul longs yes even faints faints i mean you're putting some effort and energy into this faints for the house and worship of the Lord my God. Look back at verse 2 again. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. Now when we, uh, when we envy the birds who nest in the eaves of our church, when we actually are jealous of them, and we envy them, that's when we begin to understand how we should feel uh, about worship. We should be jealous. We should be jealous of the birds because the birds get to live 24-7 at God's house. You know, they'll build, they'll build the nests around, around this whole property, and they get to live here 24-7 at God's house. Now, in the psalmist, 
He watched the birds find a refuge in the temple of his day, the house of worship in his day, and he saw them where they built nests up in the eaves and of the temple courts, and he saw them living close to the Most High God, just being here all day, every day, and doing their business in the presence of God. He saw them, the birds, bring up their young in the shadow of the altar of Almighty God. He saw that. Look at verse number 3. Yes, the sparrow has found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even your altars, in the shadow of God's altars, raising her young. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. I mean, he is just so overwhelmed, so overwhelmed with the thought of being in continual worship of Almighty God. That's why he said what he said in verse number 4. Look at verse number 4. Blessed are they that dwell, that reside, that abide, that live in your house. They will be still praising you. Selah. The Hebrew word translated dwell, it means to sit, to remain sitting, to establish, to make a habitation, to live there. And the word blessed in verse number four, it means happy, joyful, pleased, thrilled, elated, glad. So when we make our habitation, when we say, you know, when it comes to Sunday morning, I'm going to be in the house of worship no matter what. Unless I'm sick, dying in the hospital, or I'm out of town and can't be, I'm going to be in the house of worship. And when we say that, and we determine that to be a part of our lives, we drive down a stake in our lives, and we just make it a part of who we are, there's joy unspeakable and full of glory because i'll tell you what the scripture is telling us here is when we have a great devotion to god's house we will have a great experience of god's presence can i have a witness say man on the lord's day our soul deeply drinks drinks from the lord's well I want you to look at verse number 5 now. Psalm 84, verse number 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also fills the pools. They go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appears before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. On a day of worship, being in his house, in God's presence, it actually produces in us strength for our Christian lives for the rest of the week. When we come here it's, and we listen with all of our body, soul, and spirit, we take in God's Word, we go away from this place better than when we came. Can I have a witness? Say amen. The more we come, the more we desire to come, the stronger we will become. Isaiah the prophet, he wrote, he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's a promise from God. And when we dwell in the house of the Lord, we will find strength. 
We will find strength in our soul to face anything and everything that this old world can throw at us. We will find the strength of God to stand true in his faith. Say amen. I mean, look at verse 5. First part of verse number 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, O God. Whose strength is in God. Now, I may be kind of dating myself, but does anybody remember Will Robinson and Lost in Space? Would you raise your hand so I know? So, all right, some of you younger people have to watch the reruns or something. When I was growing up, they had a, they had a TV series, and it was called Lost in Space, and Will Robinson was there, and they had this very cool robot. He, he was around, and he could stretch out his arms and do crazy things with his, you know, pincer things, and and he would say, warning, warning, danger, Will Robinson, warning, warning, is what he would say. Remember that? I do. And that's what the robot would say in Lost in His Space. Now, the more we come to the house of worship and desire to come to the house of worship, the stronger we will become in our Christian faith. Okay, but the opposite, warning, 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 Will Robinson, the opposite is true. Okay, the less we come and the less we desire to come and the more we desire to stay away, the weaker we will become in our faith and life will eventually overtake us. Life will overtake us and drive us into depression and despair. I mean, just stop and think about it, all right? You get all these celebrities uh, that, we're, that so many of us are familiar with. I mean, they've got fame and fortune and, and a lifestyle that everybody says, you know, everybody wish they had, and yet their, their homes are broken. Their relationships are busted all to pieces. They, they, they commit suicide. For, they, they turn to drug and alcohol abuse. And you think, why? Why? Because life, deep down in the soul and spirit, life is empty without the presence and worship of God Almighty. Can I have a witness? Say amen. Now, it doesn't take an overly intelligent person to understand this one Bible verse, okay? If we draw near to God, God will draw. Now, I don't think you have to be, you know, a genius to figure this one out. If we draw near to God, God will draw. We need to wise up. Okay, we just need to, to wise up and have a great desire for God through the week. We have a desire for God. We pray during the week. We, are, we read his word during the week. And then on the Lord's day, when we meet together, on the Lord's day as we worship him together, we can experience the power of God's presence in a moving and meaningful way. And when the word of God is preached, it speaks to our hearts because we prepared the way. When we come into his courts and dwell, dwell in his house. God takes our lemons in our life, and he makes them lemonade. Did you see that? Look at verse number six. Bless the man who strengths in God, who passing through the valley of Baca makes it a well. The rain also fills the pools Okay, now some of us, you know, will say, what is that baker thing all about? Well, that's a Hebrew word, and, and the psalmist is choosing here, kind of a poetic, that baker in Hebrew means weeping, crying. So when we are passing through the valley of weeping and walking the trail of tears and fighting an ocean of misery, we acutely 
need the living water that comes from the well of worshiping Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Can I have a witness? Say amen. We acutely need. It was an old Baptist preacher from yesteryear. His name was Vance Havner. He just had a way with words. And he wrote this. He said, you know, God uses broken things. It takes broken soil to produce a crop, broken clouds to give rain, broken grain to give bread, broken bread to give strength. It is the broken alabaster box that gives forth perfume. It is Peter weeping bitterly in the valley of Baca who returns to greater power than ever. God can take our tears and turn them into wells of cool living water. He can take the lemons and give us lemonade. You believe that? Say amen. I don't care how bad it's been in your life, how far away you've been or how long it's been. You come back working with God and walking with him And you're going to find new power and strength and a refreshing in your soul because you're experiencing his presence. Say amen. When we are together in the worship of God, he can take those lemons, those things that are troubling and bitter in our lives, and he can make us some thirst-quenching lemonade. Praise God. Praise God. When we need strength in our soul, when we need answers to prayers, God's house is the place to be. Okay? God's house is the place to be. Look at verse 7. They go from strength to strength. God's strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. We're, we're, we're here right now. We're sitting in the presence of the Lord of heaven and earth. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. See, when we have a great devotion to God's house, then we will have a great experience of God's presence. The two go hand in hand. On the Lord's day, our soul should deeply desire to be in the Lord's house. On the Lord's day, our soul deeply drinks from the Lord's well. On the Lord's day, our soul deeply satisfies in the Lord's work. Look at verse number 9 now. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts, in your presence, in your house of worship, is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in you. See, for those of us who drink, drink deeply at the well of living water, One day in God's house is better than a thousand days anywhere else. It's just better. It it is just better. Years years ago, there was a, 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 a composer, a songwriter, Matt Redman, and he wrote a song that was based on this on this Psalm 84. And the lyric the lyrics go like this, verse 1. 
How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul longs and even faints for you. For here my heart is satisfied within your presence. I stand beneath the shadow of your wings. And then the chorus goes, Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. In verse 2 he writes, One thing I ask, and I would seek, to see your beauty, to find you in the place your glory dwells. Then he does the chorus, Better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere he goes to the bridge my heart and flesh cry out for you the living god your spirit's water to my soul I've tasted and I've seen. Come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near to you. Sing it with me. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Sing it. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Now, I'm telling you, this world has a lot of good choices, okay? They're not sin and of themselves unless they take the place of the worship of God. There's a lot of good choices in life, but there's one better choice. That better choice is to spend every single day of worship possible in the worship house of the Lord our God. Can I have a witness? Amen. Now for the psalmist, he didn't have to be the guy up front. Okay? He didn't have to be he didn't have to be one of the priests. He, didn't, he wasn't asking for, you know, a high up leadership position. He he didn't have to be one of the Levites who attended the altar. He didn't even need to be one of the musicians or the singers uh, that were up front on the on the platform. No, he was satisfied just to be a doorkeeper. Just to open the door. And closed the doors. People of God came and went. He was satisfied to be a doorkeeper in the house of God because he was in the house of God. Look at verse 10. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand, and I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of God wickedness say amen a doorkeeper in the house of god one commentator he tried to capture the the gist of verse 10 with these words he said i don't care what you do but just keep me in god's house let me hear the sweet voices of the redeemed sing praises. Let me hear them, the ministry and the preaching of the word. Let me sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus with communion on my lips. 
We're going to be celebrating Holy Communion tonight. It's the whole, most holy and sacred time in the life of the church. And anyone who is a believer can celebrate Holy Communion here with us tonight. You be back at the 6 o'clock hour and have communion on your list. Just let me be where God is. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. A hundred years from now, whatever career you had, whatever accomplishments you received, whatever trophies you got, whatever plaques they gave you, whatever watches, ever how much money was in your stock portfolio or in your bank account, whatever you drove and whatever you, whatever you lived in, a hundred years from now, nobody's going to remember it. But a hundred years from now, what we do for Jesus, what we do for the Lord God, how we spend our lives in honor of him, that lives for eternity. Amen? Amen. When we worship, our Heavenly Father is a sun and a shield. He says in verse number 11, for the Lord God, first part of verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield for the lord's going to give grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly from them that walk with him so i want you to think about those two those two uh, mental images that that the uh, the psalmist is using here is his poetry is as the sun God shows us, he shines a light on us, he shows us ourselves. But as a shield, our shield, he shows us himself. As the sun, he discloses in the brightness our nothingness. But as a shield, he shows us his greatness. As the sun he enables us to discern that we deserve nothing but wrath and shame because we are all sinners that fall short of the glory of the holy God of heaven and earth. But as a shield, we have a title to a mansion in glory and we can claim our inheritance reserved for us, incorruptible, cannot be taken away from us in heaven forever. Give me a witness, amen. As the sun, he's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. But as a shield, he protects and he comforts and he shelters. So no, no wonder... He ends this whole psalm by saying what he says in verse number 12. Look at verse number 12. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in you. Can we read that together, the whole verse? Let's read it out loud. Read it with me. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in you the or you some of the old english there i'm telling you when we have a great devotion to god's house that's when we will have a great experience of god's presence yes let's stand with every head bowed and eyes closed you and our online congregation if you'll also bow your heads for a word of prayer and be in an attitude of prayer at home. The reason the Bible calls Sunday the Lord's Day is because the day belongs to the Lord. It's the Lord's Day. Deeply desiring the Lord's house, deeply drinking from the Lord's well, deeply satisfied in the Lord's work. That's where we want to be. That's where you need to be. Now there are passages of Scripture which actually command us to be in the house of worship on the Lord's Day. And, and there's a time and a place for commandments, but that's not Psalm, that's not Psalm 84. 
Psalm 84 reflects desire. I want to be here in the house of worship. I want to be in the house of prayer. I want to be with God's people. I want to hear the word preached. Psalm 84 should inspire us to long for, yearn for the worship in God's church. Now maybe you're here and for whatever reasons over the years you've just kind of lost a deep desire that you once had to be devoted to the day of worship. You may still come sporadically from time to time when it's convenient, but there was a time when on Sundays you were dwelling in the house of God. I know you never meant to become indifferent, apathetic, neglectful even, perhaps even to the point of uncaring, but here you are. Well, I've got some good news. I've got some good news. You can have the same devotion to Christ and his church once again, and even greater. You can feel like the psalmist felt about God's worship. In God's house and when you do you'll find you'll find a great fresh start you'll find a greater experience of God's presence in your soul by kneeling at the altar of prayer spiritually speaking you're gonna drive down a stake in your life you say you know what Lord from from here on out no matter what no matter what on the day of worship I'm going to be in the house of worship. I'm going, to, I'm going to be in the house of prayer. So help me, God. You come and pray that prayer. You come and pray that prayer, and God will honor it. Before you can feel about God's house the way the psalmist and many in our congregation feel, you need to first be a part of God's family of faith. So if you're here, I'm not asking if you're religious. I'm not asking if you even attended church from time to time over your life. I'm asking you, are your sins forgiven? You know it and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ through faith. It's not religion. It's a relationship. Well, if you want to take one step of faith, you move forward to the altar of prayer. We believe that simply by that physical movement and pray and kneeling, you'll help, you'll help solidify the spiritual decision that you make. We'll pray with you. Someone from our church, take the Bible, show you how to know Jesus Christ, be a part of the family of God, and then you will begin to experience and understand the meaning of Psalm 84. What number do we have, Brother Robert? 220. Let's sing that little chorus. He is here. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. People singing, sing it again. He is here, hallelujah. He is here, amen. He is here, holy, holy. I will bless his name again. He is here, listen closely. instruments let God's people lift their voice he is here hallelujah he is here amen he is here holy holy lift your hands 
again. I will bless his name again. He is here. Listen closely. Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be the same. All of God's people said, Amen. I'm telling you, the devil wants to keep people out of the house of prayer, out of the house of worship. So there will be thousands of distractions. And just as soon as you head this way, so you're going to have a flat tire. Your muffler's going to fall off. Uh, you know, your coffee's going to be cold. I mean, just whatever. It's just going to put you on the wrong setting so that when you get here, you're like this. When we need to be on guard, prepare our hearts so that we can be like this. Lord, let me receive your word today. Let me sense your presence. I worship you, the only true and living God. Okay, let's see. Let's just repeat after me what David said. Lift your hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. O oh, my soul. O oh, my soul. And all that is within me. And all within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, we're going to say so long to our online congregation. Thank you for tuning in this, this morning. Uh, likely we will not be uh, live streaming the communion service in tonight's service, uh, but we hope to see you back here if you're on, uh, on our uh, live stream next Lord's Day here at Bible Way. God bless you and we love you.